Oh yeah, that's an understatement. Oh, oh, oh. what is even the hell? <laughs> hey, I've got a. How about a javelin? That a jav <laughs> that's a javelin on the floor. That's a fucking javelin. <laughs> We're fighting a robot tank man with a javelin and a Terminator that is just a head on a robot body. <laughs> My brain. My brain is hurting. I gotta question the lo now. I gotta question the logic of this just a little bit. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, the robot man, fine. Is but it's still just a bit out there. But a javelin? Why a freaking javelin? And how did he do that? That doesn't. He just kind of. Whatever. The kingpin apparently has like a dimensional shambler thing. I have no clue what the hell that is. He can go to different dimensions to get different cronies to fight for him. Useful and an excellent explanation as to how he can still get people to work for him after a hell of a lot of them have been killed by the Punisher, especially in the Max uh, imprints. I still haven't <laughs> read any of Punisher of stuff, what? though. Still haven't read any what? Punisher stuff. Oh, now he's sure, firing no, missiles. Ah, oh, come on. What? He's firing. He's firing missiles. Yeah, and I'm throwing grenades at the guy. Oh, quick, Kuras! Oh shit, you're missing this. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, we just killed him. Uh, what? We just killed yeah, him. You just killed him. Yeah, and I just screwed up the screen by pressing Control Alt and one of the arrow keys at the same time. Uh oh. That's but, never good. Yeah. Nah, it's easily fixed, but it's an annoyance. When it first happened, like an hour ago, I was panicking because this is my father's computer, and if he sees anything out of place, he'll go crazy. Think of Lois from Malcolm in the Middle. That kind of crazy. Uh oh, this is a bonus stage. Oh yeah, it's just like Street Fighter. Oh, oh yeah, you got to try to shoot the barrels. Yeah, I figured. Oh, got hey, hell yeah, I got five. You got ah shit. Come on, six, eight, nine, ten, oh, come on, eleven, twelve. Let's find this funny. They're in the middle of this battle, and yet they got to stop to shoot barrels. <laughs> Even the most badass of badasses need to take a break every now and again. I, I guess mean, that works. How would you spend your day? How would you spend your breaks if you were the Punisher? If not, just practicing on barrels that can possibly kill you falling from great heights. Well, it would be uh, entertaining, and we get the adrenaline up. Well, let's pay oh, them a yeah. little visit. Help with the weeding and vermin elimination. Well, let's pay them a little visit. Uh, God damn it! Never mind. Anyways, as I was gonna say, I uh, remember reading this. Uh, I think it's called Punisher Armory. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, did I just hit you? I don't know. A anyways, I was as I was saying, I, re I remember reading this Punisher Armory comic where he basically describes all, all of the weapons he has in such detail and his training exercises and everything. And I remember him saying that. He practices falling down a flight of stairs into a pile of junk in uh, in the corner so that he's prepared for that if it happens in a battle situation. That is so badass. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it, it was written back in the 90s when the Warzone uh, comics were still going, so yeah. These days, it's way more realistic and way more dark in a few of the issues. Uh, the first run of the Max Imprints are, were mainly written by Garth Ennis. To me, he's one of the best writers for the Punisher that ever existed. I think There's I recognize the name. What? I think I recognize the name. Garth Ennis. Yeah, he read. Uh, he read. He wrote, wrote the Authority and I think the Hitman, a DC character, and Preacher. Yeah, that's what he wrote. And yeah, he wrote a lot of Punisher comics uh, between 2004 and I think 2007. And man, are they ever good. Basically, to me, he's like the best writer you could ever get for that character because he totally got inside his head and damn. Uh, later on, they got a few others and uh, I think issue 65 or something had one, one writer that wrote the Punisher in such a way that was uh, way out of character. So the new uh, line of Max Imprints is written by Jason Aaron, and they go more into the psychology of uh, Frank, 
I, I hesitate to call him the Punisher because he's really just Frank in this uh, imprint. And they do a really good job uh, uh, going into his head psychologically, you know, losing his family and doing what he does, why he does it, and not in that uh, silly 90s kind of way where it's all just, um, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, surfacey? Uh, they really go in depth. With, yeah, superficial. They really go in depth uh, how it all affects him and why he does that and how he thinks. Seriously, I would recommend the Punisher Max imprints to just about anyone who's looking for um, a Punisher comic or just a, a really well done uh, comic with guns and killing an anti-hero. <clears throat> it's like Batman, uh, if you could actually kill people. Yeah, pretty much. There's one other, there was one other thing I would like to say. Oh yeah, and the Punisher Max uh, imprints, they have some of the best artists ever. My personal favorites uh, are, if anybody actually heard of them, are Leandro Fernandez and Goran Parlov. The latter being a fellow countryman. So no wonder I like his work. <laughs> well. uh, the thing is, uh, Leandro is more like uh, realism. And uh, while uh, Goran Parlov is more like stylized, uh, he basically gives the Punisher and Barracuda, a villain, like big, chunky ass arms. Uh, the kind of arms that even 40 uh, year old Schwarzenegger would be uh, jealous of. But it actually kind of works in the issues that he does. Well, I just went off totally, you know, fanboy on the entire series just now. No, I think. Punisher could stand for a few more fanboys because it's not as prolific as a lot of other Marvel comics like <coughs> Spider-Man. Actually, actually, I think it's uh, kind of a good idea that... Ah, damnation, I just fell off the train. That's never good. I had it with these motherfucking thugs on this motherfucking train. <laughs> I was going to say that, but... Yeah, but I'm Nick Fury. Kind of. Ish. Not really. Whatever. 90s, 90s Nick Fury. Yeah. Personally, I... I kind of prefer the 90s Nick Fury over the Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury. I mean, I get used to him via the Iron Man c uh, you know, cartoon, the Spider-Man cartoon and whatnot. I mean... Uh, yeah, that's who I, who I think of when I think of Nick Fury. Yeah. But Samuel does a good, good enough job, I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Samuel is badass. But still... Oh yeah, I remember there was... Is this the Bushwhacker? This is so totally the Bush... Yeah, Bushwhacker. I'm such a nerd, I actually know the guy's name. <laughs> and he's like a mutant, and if he drinks bullets, eats bullets, he can shoot them out of his arm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, I played the Punisher game from 2005, so I know this. Uh, one he other can... thing. Yeah? He can eat bullets. That reminds me of some character from Mask. Mask, that mask. Jim Carrey I, comedy. You mean the mask, the green-haired guy, right? Yeah, yeah, that one. Green skin, I mean. Yeah. I don't There's know. some guy in there that was able to do that. I think it was the mask him himself. I mean, wouldn't really be too much of a stretch of imagination to say that. No. But yeah, oh man, <laughs> I'm just having a total uh, remembrance of the old cartoon. I was always puzzled by that, uh, what's his face, Walter, the big... Frankenstein kind of dude. I never figured out what the hell his thing was. I mean, he was like total stoic, and that was always, you know, weird. Hmm. Where the hell am I? Yeah. This guy. Uh, oh, I just died. Yeah. But what? There's one thing. Look at his name, Bushwhacker. There's one thing he's. And couldn't dodge. What? I said I couldn't dodge the attack. No. But anyways, his name, when I heard it, I mean Bushwhacker, just listen to it. <laughs> actually sounds kind of weird compared, mainly because he doesn't look like he would actually spend any time in the bush. <laughs> True, but still, the name. I mean, I think in the uh, Punisher 2005 game, he kind of looks like it. Well, actually, he looks more like the, a flasher kind of guy, but still. And you're far off with the points than me because of the freaking lag. Most of the time, my my attention just goes elsewhere while I'm talking. 
Well, that is a problem with doing Let's Plays. There's the Kingpin. This time you've gone this too far. This time you've gone too far. Of course you will do my heel, while the insects you are. I'm a mega slack guy. You noticed, by the way, where's my lighter? <laughs> Some oh, random guy. Now I'll hit. Now I'll have your head. <laughs> and why did? Well, we killed all the clones, so that was pretty easy. Uh, I'm collecting these. Uh, damnation! <laughs> the sewer level. Oh no! Uh, and I automatically got shot. Freaking sewer level! God damn! I honest. I think it's the universal thing. Everybody hates the freaking sewer level. Mainly because it's just so confined and unimaginative and just boring. Yeah, I mean, pretty real, much. If real sewers were like this, it would be pretty awesome to work there, kind of. I mean, you could have, like, a hideout there or something. Yeah. But, and I mean, I don't know how the sewers are there in America, but over here they're tiny as shit. Yeah, pretty much the same way here. I mean, there's no way you're building a fortress in a sewer. Why, uh, yeah, why are you drawing it? Don't think you'd want to, though, because it'd probably smell pretty bad. I think that's how it is a sewer, after all. I'll, my uh, apartment building is uh, close. Not like two feet away, but let's say five kilometers away from a massive junkyard. So when summer strikes, oh boy, does it smell. So it wouldn't be that different. Oh. The, only, the only good thing about it is, well, near the junkyard, there's this, like, uh, a flea market where you can buy just about anything. Well, okay, not really anything, but still a lot of things. Well, no. I <clears throat> I heard this story from my father when he was like selling uh, uh, stuff there. I think it was my comics or something. <clears throat> a guy came up to him. I swear to God, he came up to him, like all you know, twitchy in a coat, and asked, "Hey, you got any animal porn?" What? I I swear to God, that's true. <laughs> Well, I guess he would be kind of twitchy. People like that are a little weird. I mean, but it, little. And it's not like the internet wasn't available. That was like five years ago, I think. Wow. That's uh, pretty sad. I know. Well, maybe the guy didn't have internet. I don't know. You never know. That's one thing I always find funny about these old arcade games. Basically, you're fighting a bunch of clones. Uh, it makes sense, actually. I mean, you don't ex I mean, they may be part of a gang, so may they may have a s the same clothing. Well, but but the faces are no excuse. Yeah, that's. If I'm allowed to go off on a tangent, that's the one thing uh, about, say, Oblivion that I could not stand. The character creator, the faces weren't different. They were just a bit stretched out, and that was it. 